Are you a new Linux user? Well, this video is for you today to help you walk through some of those first feelings and dealings that you deal with in Linux. Hi, my name's Jeremy. This channel's about tech, go figure. And today we're gonna to be talking to you, a new Linux user. And if you're not a new Linux user and you've decided to watch this video, uh, the comments are ready and available for you to help out and give some tips and tricks for new Linux users and what to look out for. But I really wanted to focus on the new Linux user today uh, and share some of my experiences and hopefully help you out along the way to make it as smooth and easy as possible to embrace using Linux. Linux is such a great operating system, such a great way to do your computing on a desktop or a laptop or whatever device you've got that you want to put Linux on. Linux is everywhere. But today, if you've installed Linux for the first time, we're really talking about desktop Linux, okay? I'm going to be speaking from my own perspective, my own experience and experience using Linux personally and helping others use Linux along the way. We want to make sure that you've already installed Linux uh, and that's what this video is. You've freshly installed Linux and now you're ready to use it. Um, if you haven't, I have a Linux migration checklist. Uh, it's a two-part series that you can check out to see what you need. Essentially, you need to make sure you've got your hardware is ready to be incompatible to be used and the software that you need is going to be ready to go and to be able to be used in Linux. All right. You may feel like you have to have a certain technical knowledge or a higher technical knowledge to be able to use Linux. When really, if you have the technical knowledge enough to be able to <laughs> put an OS, an operating system on a USB drive, boot it on your system, and to be able to install that operating system, you have enough technical knowledge to start to use Linux day to day. With experience and time and effort, your knowledge will grow and you will be able to grow and learn whatever you want to or not want to. I used to feel like you had to make sure everything in the terminal. I had to know every command. I had to know uh, and read every main page to be able to understand what system I'm using. And it's so vast. You will get frustrated. Something is not going to work right. Something is going to start getting quirky on you when you uh, go through an update. Something may break. Something may not be where it was before and you don't understand why. That's okay. There's plenty of resources for you to use, but don't let that frustration take you out and just stop using Linux. If you've set yourself up and made sure that all your hardware works, that the software that you need works, and you've chosen a distribution that's gonna work for you, I really think you should be okay, but there still will be frustrations. Keep fighting through, it's gonna be worth it. But it's okay if you're frustrated or feel like you don't know everything. That is something that I deal with, I'm well into my 40s and I feel that way about pretty much everything in life. The more I learn and try to understand, the more I realize I don't understand anything. Part of getting comfortable in Linux is to understand and to use Linux distributions to your advantage. I treated Linux distributions and live environments kind of like speed dating. No, I never had to really choose one. You don't have to get married to one forever. It's good to get to know one and really feel comfortable with one. Even if you've just installed, when you've just installed Linux onto your system, go ahead and still keep that USB drive and try new Linux distributions as much as you can stomach and see what you like and what you don't like. At this point, being able to shift a system to be exactly the way you want it to may not be the best time. Maybe lean in to what people have already chosen as tools, applications, and, and user interface as a good base point for what already works well. Maybe you don't like this desktop environment, but appreciate these tools on this Linux distribution. There's a good chance that someone has taken the base of Ubuntu and added this desktop environment or baked in these drivers or whatever it is, put them together, and you may not have saved yourself some time as far as effort and heartache to get something to work the way you want to. I like to look at distributions like a bakery, right? So each Linux distribution is like chocolate cake. 
And, you know, the basic elements are there, you know, flour, sugar, all of those kinds of things. And in the same way with Linux distributions, there are uh, the Linux kernel, there are desktop environments, daemons, you know, init systems, all of these things. And some have more of this kind or this kind of flower or or kernel or whatever it is, right? You, you get the, the combination here. If you were to take 10 bakeries and get their chocolate cake, you would have 10 pieces of hopefully delicious chocolate cake, but they would each taste different. One would be a little sweeter or would have, you know, use a different kind of chocolate. You know what I'm saying? And distributions are the same way. So just continue to have fun and install Linux distributions that have live environments, boot them into your system in that live environment and kind of get a sense of things because I think that's going to really help you get a sense of what's important and what you are going to need from your Linux distribution. You don't have to learn everything. Learn what you need and what you're interested in. There's so much information, it is overwhelming. Like I mentioned before, I really thought I had to learn so much, and I do, and I still have so much to learn. And I'm not saying just stop learning, but all you need to worry about is when you first get started is, how do I navigate this desktop environment? How do I find where my files are? How do I use the software center or maybe the terminal to update my system? What is GTK? What is KDE? What are these things? Just focus on that. Get an understanding, get comfortable with the system, and that's going to really help you feel good about the next thing, because you probably have a specific reason why you're using Linux. So you need to make sure you understand the vast landscape of Linux users. There's so many people using Linux for so many different reasons. Some have been using Linux for well over 20 years. They are the veterans. They are the ones, they are hardened Linux users. And so those veteran Linux users have a very specific way of looking at using Linux and why they use Linux. Some people use it just for a specific use case, maybe a specific application. Maybe they're a developer and the use case and the workflow is perfect for that developer. Maybe they move to Linux for philosophical reasons, for privacy and security. Maybe they joined Linux for practical reasons because they wanted to continue to use older hardware. Maybe there's just general use case and they just thought it would be fun and cool to learn something new. Whatever the case, everyone's got their reasons for using Linux and everyone seems to be pretty passionate about why they use it and why you should use it that way too. Don't let that cloud your use case. I mean, it's almost religious in the way that people use Linux. We should tell you how wonderful it is and how cool it can be and how freeing it can be in certain ways. Some people will say you should only use open source software. Or some people will say you should only use the command line. And some people should say you should only use distributions that are community based and not supported by a company and all have their valid reasons. So my suggestion is don't let other users cloud why you're using Linux. Just appreciate the fast, wonderful, passionate group of people using this operating system and the software that accompanies this Linux life. The command line is great, useful, and essential to become a power user, but it's not necessary for day-to-day -day use. There's so many user-friendly Linux distributions, so don't let the command line be what scares you away from Linux. You can get warm and cozy in Linux before you feel the need to start to use the command line. There's a good chance that at some point you're going to need it, but don't let that be what scares you. And you can access it. My wife uses a Linux computer every day and she never has to access the command line. I'm the only one who's ever used the command line on her computer. So don't worry about that. So you've gotten going, you're in this. I really suggest you find ways to contribute whenever you can, once you get comfortable and you've really gotten a sense of Linux. Maybe you can help beta test and take notes of bugs. Maybe you can maintain a package. Maybe you can donate to projects. Whatever it is, find a way to contribute in Linux. There is a communal nature in desktop Linux. It's a journey, a Linux journey. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. If you get frustrated, just don't forget 
why you moved over, and continue on. I just really enjoyed learning Linux, and I want you to have an opportunity to learn it too. If you have questions or comments, there's a couple of things you can do. Go ahead and feel free to, if you have questions or thoughts, go ahead and add it in the comments, and maybe someone in the community can help you out. To understand there's other resources online, you can watch other YouTube creators that are doing YouTube videos on Linux. You can go to uh, Reddit channels like uh, Linux for Noobs or the, the forum of the distribution that you've chosen. Go ahead, introduce yourself, take a couple lumps, uh, learning how to communicate the way that it works best for them to help you embrace it. It's gonna be fun. Sincerely, welcome to the Linux community. Let's continue to do this Linux thing and I'll see you next time.